Wise Enchanter, Chapter 10. Well, I just found the letter I. Just a few moments later, the sea had turned miraculously into a bright green lawn, and when Rukmini turned to look behind her, the forest had completely vanished. Cool, fresh air blew across the grass, and the children ran. They ran and ran, stumbling and laughing at all the wide open space in front of them. The rolling turf went on forever until in the distance on a hill, the children spied a big blue structure with domes and turrets. It looked like it was made of glass. A little way down the lawn, something was bouncing up into the air like a large colorful grasshopper. And without knowing why, the children ran toward it. Where are we? Lauren breathlessly asked her friends. Is that a castle in the distance? Doesn't really look like one, Rukmini said, but it's nice here. The Dormouse, despite all the excitement, had fallen asleep in the bag. Struggling against all their bags and supplies, they kept running. At last, they came close enough to whatever was bouncing into the air to see what it was, and they could hardly believe their eyes. A jester in a colorful hat was bouncing, jumping wildly up and down on a big, round, sunken trampoline. As they approached, he whirled around. He had a kind, funny face. His eyes might have been seemed sad for a moment, but he smiled any shadows away. Join me, join me, I'm Jumping Jack. You first, he pointed at Rukmini, and she stepped forward, putting her bag and the dormouse down on the ground. Jumping Jack the jester held out his hand. Oh, joyful joy, he shouted, children to play with. Come on, all of you, jump with me. It's fun, 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 nothing but fun. Come and jump now, everyone. Rukmini climbed up onto the trampoline. She jumped and laughed, and then her friends couldn't wait, and they joined her. Soon they were all jumping and laughing and falling down, and Jumping Jack said, Oh, we need more space for all of us. Come and play at my house. It's full of trampolines. He jumped off the trampoline onto the grass. Ouch, he said. Watch the ground. It's hard. Then he turned, and with a light step, he walked over to all their baggage and effortless, effortlessly picked up everything, including the dormouse in the bag, and danced onward across the green toward the big glass structure on the hill. The children followed. Welcome home, Jumping Jack said as they reached a magnificent rainbow-colored set of stairs that led up to the great blue glass-domed house. He placed their luggage at the top of the stairs, and the children stared in awe. When they stood on the first step, music began to play. They looked around in delight. Well, so you like my musical stairs? Good, we can play musical stairs. Each stair plays a different instrument and many different songs. Or you can join me in the jumping halls. Wait a second, Michael said. He ran up the stairs and down again just to hear the sweet music they played. This is great, he said, and his eyes shone. Shall we jump? Sifo asked. I'd like to see the jumping halls. Joy, 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 Jumping Jack sang again and turned to open the massive doors that led into his house. The inside of the house was astonishing. They entered a huge hall, but instead of a floor beneath their feet, the children found themselves standing on a massive turquoise trampoline. It rippled and shone like water. Jump, said Jumping Jack, as high as far as you like. The four friends jumped. They bounced so high they felt like they were flying. All across the great hall they leapt and laughed. They followed Jumping Jack down trampoline corridors and into more rooms with different colored floors that were all bouncy. The children were having so much fun that they could think of nothing else except what was just around the next corner in the house. When they could jump no more, Jumping Jack smiled. I have so much room in my house, he said. Stay as long as you like. The children liked the red room the most and decided to stay there. So Jumping Jack brought them their luggage and told them to join him for meals whenever they were hungry. 
At sundown, the Dormouse woke up. What are we doing here? He asked in a cross voice and blinked his dreams away. Enjoying ourselves, Michael said. Oh, Dormouse, you should have seen us jumping. We've had so much fun. So that's what this is all about, hmm? Fun? Yes, Lauren laughed and lay back on the bouncy floor of their room. It's the most fun I've ever had in my life. It's all just joy. Hmm, said the Dormouse. Well, it doesn't look like you need anyone to be on guard tonight. I'll go exploring. Funny kind of floor, he said, testing it out. Just like jelly. Wobbles when you walk. I don't know. Doesn't seem so much fun to me. It's all made out of trampoline stuff. Can you find your way around? Of course, said the Dormouse. Lauren bounced herself comfortable and sent the Dormouse by accident flying out of the room. The next day, Jumping Jack showed the children the rest of his house and his backyard. Fun, 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 he grinned excitedly. Jump, joke, and have a jolly good time. No work, only play all night and all day. They saw everything with amazement. In one room with high glass ceilings stood a dazzling pink indoor pool tiled with tiny rose-colored tiles. A pink canal led from the pool through an opening surrounded by glass to a vast blue outdoor pool. A rainbow fountain at the center of the pool glinted in the sun. From the pool, beautiful blue canals radiated outward toward the grounds. It's no joke. You can follow the pink canals and swim right through the house, Jumping Jack said. Then you can swim outside and all around the grounds by following the blue canals. Go on, be my guests. Rukmini laughed and jumped up and down and ex excitedly. This is the best place in the world, she said. I think we should stay here forever. No one knew how much time went by. The children swam and jumped and played and ate with the joyful jumping jack. They had forgotten about their boat, their dormouse, and even their journey. And then one night, the dormouse arrived back in the red room where the children were fast asleep after a very busy day of jumping and swimming. And he tried to wake them up, but his voice was too soft. The children tossed and turned and laughed in their sleep and made such a noise that the dormouse was compelled to run from child to child and give each of their toes a sharp little bite. Ouch, Lauren woke up. Ouch, ouch, Rukmini sat up. Ow, Sipho was wide awake. Oh, that hurts. Michael woke up. They rubbed the sleep from their very sleepy eyes and looked at the dormouse who blinked at them apologetically and sternly. What's the matter? Rukmini asked, yawning. This, the dormouse whispered. His whiskery voice was no more than a hiss. This is the matter. Can't you see? You've trapped yourselves here. There's no way out. I've been to the edge of this place and there's nothing but steep cliffs and gorges on either side and a deep cold river that runs through the bottom of the gorge. There's an icy wind blowing. The outside pool and all the blue canals have frozen over tonight. I smell snow and darkness. So much for your inspired imaginations. Have you forgotten your boat? What about the journey, the magic book? Doesn't any of that matter anymore? Are you going to end your journey here? The children heard the Dormouse as if he was talking from far away. His words took time to sink into their heads. Then they looked at each other and each of them felt something like a heavy weight land in their hearts. Oh, dear Dormouse, Rukmini said, suddenly wide awake. How could we have been so thoughtless? What are we to do? Where is the magic book? The Dormouse bounced to the door and from behind it with his teeth, he grabbed the bag that had the magic book. Open it, he said. I've been busy in it since you were engaged otherwise. By now, all four of the children were properly awake. They looked around and suddenly it didn't seem necessary at all to have such continuous fun. They watched as the Dormouse flipped the pages of the magic book. They came to the picture of the hermit. That's H, said Rukmini. I don't remember what comes after that, though I know I drew it. She turned the page. 
The Isles of Imagination, Michael said. I see them now, tall and straight, like I am. <clears throat> we almost missed it. I for I am, and in, and island, and imagination. And what did you draw, dear Dormouse, that we might learn from you? The Dormouse turned the page yet again. It's him, jolly, jovial, joyful, Mr. Jumping Jack. You did it, Dormouse. It's a J, Lauren said. We would have missed that one too. Oh, thank you, Dormouse. We have it now, and most importantly, we've remembered what we're doing. We must leave here immediately. And so, under the cover of darkness and to the great relief of the Dormouse, the children left the house of Jumping Jack. Outside, it was cold and they shivered. Lauren carried the Dormouse and Sifo led the way because his eyes were sharp in the night. He'd grown an, up in Africa under ink dark skies and could see things that the others couldn't. Quietly and with careful steps, they walked to where the undulating land, undulating means like this, plunged down steep, steep cliffs into rocky gorges. Can you see anything on the other side? Michael asked as Sifo stood precariously at the edge of a smooth granite rock and blinked in the darkness. Well, I'm wondering if Jumping Jack was one of the evil messengers. Here's the picture Dormouse drew. Do you see the J? They almost stopped their journey. 